Hi everyone, this is M6JKA back again. Um, I've been asked quite a bit about CPS programming um, and people have sort of said, you know, how do we do it? Um, you know, it's quite a big topic, you can't really explain that um, very, very easily, but um, what I thought I'd do is a video um, to show the basics of, you know, programming radios, or programming high tier radios with um, the high tier of CPS. So what I'd first sort of want to start with is really... Um, saying when you first get your radio, if it hasn't been programmed already, or, or if it has been programmed, um, then the best thing to do would be to basically just download your code plug that's in the radio, whether it's a factory code plug or whether it's the code plug that came with the radio supplied by a dealer or, or whatever. Um, what you want to do is get that out of the radio ASAP, so that if you ever mess anything up, you can just load that back on. It's very important that. Um, now... In order to do that, what you need to first do is install the um, the drivers for the radio and specific drivers for your radio um, for the on the PC, and also, um, of course, the CPS software. Um, you need the high tier um, CPS software to do anything with these radios. So you need to get those two things installed on your PC, and then it will allow you to um, to start. So what you want to do first of all is is um, basically up here you've got this little read button. Now providing your radio is connected and everything's looking good you want to just click that and basically extract your data from your radio. Um, now, I'm not going to do that now because I haven't got a radio connected at the moment on this on this particular PC but it's very straightforward when you hit that it will save the um, code plug and it will bring up um, a bit like this it will bring up your, your tree menu and everything else specifically for that um, code plug that it's extracted out of your radio. Next thing you want to do after that is definitely save this somewhere really safe um, so that you've you know, got that forever and you, you're always going to be able to um, load your radio back to factory settings in case anything goes wrong. So that being said, um, you've done that and all's looking good. Then you can start modifying um, you know, your code plug and, and working out what you want to do, what channels you want to put in. Now, I've always done all mine from scratch because I like to know how, how it all works and I like to know what I've got in the radio and I don't want anything extra in there that I don't um, don't need or anything like that. So, um, you know, that's what I'm going to sort of start by um, basically going through and um, and hopefully we can, you know, start learning how to, how to configure the radios. Now, the first thing you want to have a look at here is, um, you see, I've, I've got an X1P loaded in. Incidentally, what I've done with this, because I haven't used a, an actual radio um, to extract the data, what I've done is I've just gone to the default code plugs, which um, are basically stored in the Hytera CPS. So you can, what you can do is you can go into the program files, Hytera CPS, um, and there's a, there's a little folder called, um, uh, called default data, you can see that here, and it has all of the standard basic empty code plugs, if you like, for all of the different radios um, that you can get. Now, you very importantly, you can select exactly the model. So on your barcode of your box that you got the radio in, um, or even the radio itself, I think, underneath the battery cover, there's there'll be a number here like this, which will show you exactly what radio it is. It's important to use, if you're going to do it this way, um, then it's important to make sure you pick the right one. I would advise not doing it this way, um, because really really just want to extract the one from the radio because you know it's working and everything's fine so um, do that so the first thing you want to do is click on this radio information here um, and you'll see you know serial numbers and you know the, the, the type of the radio and also here's that model number again um, so it's worth just having a glance over that just to make sure everything looks okay um, and once you're happy with that you can then sort of move on to um, you know more more uh, advanced stuff. Now you've got a few different menus here. You can just expand them by by clicking on these little um, little carrots on the side, just to open them up. Um, and if you start off with common, um, and just click on setting here, you'll see a little radio alias um, box. Which what you can do here is you can just give your radio a name. So <clears throat> in effect, just I usually just put my call sign in here, and it doesn't really do anything to the uh, doesn't really play much of a part in the whole scheme of configuring things, but it just allows you to, to give your radio an alias or a name. Um, by the way, you've got a little uh, selection here which, which shows you what each menu item does, and when you kind of 
click on them. You have to click on them to actually get this to come up, uh, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> Normally on, on the other one, something like the Motorola, you just hover over it and it shows you. But um, on this one, yeah, you have to click it. And it's quite helpful. It does give you quite a bit of information about what, what you're doing. Um, so once you've done that, you've, you've basically you know, set, your, set your alias here. You probably be the next thing you'll probably be really interested in doing if you're using these radios for DMR Mark or you know a ham radio type setup is going to be to set your ID, which you have to register on the DMR network to get this ID. Um, but this this particular ID um, is a number which is specific to you and your call sign, and it's checked against your license, everything else. So you will have you know a dedicated number for your radio. So. I'm not going to go into that because there's stuff online about how to do that, but you need to register with the DMR network so you get a specific number for your call sign. So to set your ID, what you need to do is you need to go to conventional and then digital common and then basic. And then there will be a um, box which you can basically put your ID number in. Um, now, this will be you know, like an eight-digit number um, which obviously you can get from, uh, you know, the the, uh, the DMR network. They will issue with, issue you with one of those. Um, so basically, let's enter that into here, and um, and off we go. So for the UK, it always starts with two, three, five, um, and then there's a four-digit number after that. So I'm just going to put in this number. It's, I don't know whose it is, but it's just a just a, a blank number in, in effect. Um, so there you go. So that goes into that. And that has now set your radio ID uh, for digital. There's a bunch of other stuff under here which you probably you know won't want to touch just yet. There's a few things that are quite interesting, um, but you know I'd advise just leaving that alone until you've actually got the the, the thing configured first of all. Um, so there you go. That's set your DMR ID. Right. Now you've done that, um, you want to think about your contacts. So contacts are basically under the DMR services and contact list there. So you can see that just opened up. Um, now contacts are basically two things. Contacts are, you know, contacts other users um, with their IDs and also they can be um, talk groups. It's basically because a contact can either be a private call um, or it can be a group call. So what we need to do now is just basically set up your um, some of your some of your contacts. Um, and what we're going to do is, is start with a local uh, talk group, which is normally set to talk group nine and number nine. So let's just start with that. So what we're going to call it is local um, QSO. I'm just copying this from another another screen here, so just bear with me, but. Basically, local QSO um, TG9. Well, that's what you're going to see on the screen um, of the radio. So that's that's quite useful to make sure you get these in a format you're going to understand when you have it on the radio. Um, call ID you can set basically to nine because that's what you want um, your group call to be. So that's that. Now you you need to add all the others as well. Um, you need to add you know, um, talk group 13 for English, talk group 2 for Europe, um, you know, uh, what else, worldwide talk group 1, um, local, um, UK wide is talk group 235, and you can just add all these in the same place, I'm not going to do it now because it would just take all day, but, um, you know, you just want to add those into this list as well. Now, this is, this is basically like the process, you need to start with the contact list first, then you need to start populating the RX group list, um, and then you know only then you can actually really properly configure a channel. So that's how we. That's the sort of general workflow. So that goes contact, receive group list, and then you can start doing your your channel. You can also do your zone as well. You need to group the channels into zones, but I'll I'll cover that in a in a minute after we've done the um, after we've done the the RX group list. So to look at the RX group list, um, we go down here and you see that RX group list is already there's already one in there. It's basically the blank one that's been in there um, at the, from the beginning. 
Um, so if we click on that, we'll see a name here, and it um, just says, oh, it's group this one. Now, what we want to do with that, to start with, is, um, is change that oh, it's group list to something we understand, like local to a group, um, or local QSO, should I say, local QSO talk group 9, which basically matches the channel that we've got in there. So now we go like that. Now, when you get more, when you've added more contacts, you'll see them in this list here. And all you've got to do is just pick the right one out and make sure it goes into this, um, into the relevant uh, local talk group. So what I'm, what I'm doing is creating a RX group list for each talk group and that's the most that's the easiest way of, of doing it um, you know you, you'll end up with a list here which um, almost matches your group calls in your contact list so you'll have local QSO you'll have English talk group 13 Europe talk group 2 Rome talk group 8 if you're doing that um, UK wide um, talk group 235 you know, and each each RX group list in here will will um, will kind of contain the correct contact um, for members. Now it's, it seems a bit kind of long winded, but it's it's really flexible because it allows you to have you know multiple talk groups in a receive group list. So you can it, it's really for you know for adding lots of different talk groups in one particular channel. It's it's quite clever. Um, but it just means you have to do it this way around. So we've done that, and that's just going to be one channel. We'll just keep one um, one talk group in there for now, and um, we'll we'll go to sort of setting up setting up the channels. So to set up a channel, uh, now that we've got a contact, um, a talk group, and we've also got a receive group um, member, we can now set up a channel, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, you see exactly why um, why you have to do it this way. So if we go to conventional and we look down here, we see channel, open the channel, and then we go digital channel, and you can see there's three channels already in there which have been pre-configured. Um, now we want to click on that first one, and then we can see you know this is the channel list, and it starts getting interesting here because you've got all the frequencies and you know, it looks like um, looks like it should do. So Ideally, what we want to do is we want to set this um, channel alias to the name of the channel. Now, what I'm going to do now with this, I'm just going to make one channel, um, and it's going to be the calling channel, the simplex calling channel for, um, for for DMR. It's actually the UK one, so if you're in another country, then you'll have to use the right um, the right number. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put in the actual frequency number here as the name, so it's going to be sort of mega clear when you flip through the radio that you're going to see the numbers, the, the frequency on the on the channel thing. So it's basically 438-6125 megahertz, and the name of the channel is actually called DH3. Now your color code. Now that's um, that's normally quite important on um, on repeaters because each repeater will have a different will actually have a different um, a different color code. So, you know, you don't have to worry about it too much if you're sort of just making a, make just making a channel. Um, but you know, for, for simplex, we generally just use a color code of one, and also a time slot of one as well. Now these are always important. As I say, for repeaters, it will be important. You'll have to check your local repeater and whatever you whatever you've got to do. You need to use a certain color code and a certain slot depending on. Um, which channel you're making. So there you go. That's that set up. You've got a bunch of other stuff down here. Auto start. You know, quick GPS talk around. Um, receive only. You know, um, loads of different things here. These ones are grayed out because at the moment you're not using a um, you're not using a repeater, so you can't do multi-site connect or anything like that because both frequencies on here are the same. So now we, we scroll down to these, this bit at the bottom and we've got a section where you can enter the exact frequency. So what we're going to do is type in the exact frequency we want, 4386125, and then we can go across to the transmit part, the TX part, 4386125, and 
that's it. So we've got the same receive as um, transmit, which means, means it's a simplex channel. And we've got down here is where we would select our group list. Now you've only got one member in there, so the only one you can select is the local QSO talk group 9, which we made earlier in the, the uh, receive group list. And then our contact name, which is our transmit contact name, which actually comes from the contact list in DMR services there, which we also created, is showing there. So those need to be selected um, as corresponding to what you want to do. So basically you set up a channel here in 438.6125 megahertz, simplex channel, color coder one, slot one, and we're transmitting on a local talk group nine. So there you go. And receiving on a, on a talk group nine as well. So that's it. That's your channel. Um, that's your channel set up. Now what's important to remember with the channels is when you set these channels up in this list here, um, you can also go here and, and see the full list of um, channels that you've got in the radio there. It's quite straightforward here to add channels and, and do, do it that way. Um, you can also copy and paste from other code posts, which is quite nice in this one as well. Um, but really the point is, once you've created a channel in, in here, you can't actually access that on the radio because you need to assign it to, um, to a zone. Now, a zone is basically, you know, is, is really just a, a quick kind of shortcut way of accessing a group of channels, and you can select what channels you want to go in each zone. So let's look at the zone area there, um, and you see there's two standard zones in there which have just been created by default. Click on zone one, and we'll see here, um, zone one is the, is the name of that particular zone, and then we've got a bunch of channels in this as well. What we want to do here is we want to name this zone so that we can create a zone with a specific um, bunch of channels or one single channel as we've actually got in our in our um, system so far. So let's call this um, DMR simplex. Call that DMR simplex. Now that's a that's our one created. Now, we've got all these other channels in here as well. We've got some analog channels and some digital channels. All we really want is that one digital channel that we created a minute ago in there. So let's remove the others. And because it does, it's a default zone. It just automatically adds those ones in. So you can just remove them. So now we've got one channel in here in our, in our DMR simplex channel zone. Um, so now when you, you know, in the radio, what you'll just basically do is you'll just go to the zone menu and you'll see DMR simplex. And then once you select that, it will allow you to have one channel, um, you know, called DH3 um, in, in, the, in the radio. So what you really need to do is add all the, add all the other ones. There's like seven, I think, um, channels there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And... and um, you need to add those in as well. So that's it. That's the zone part um, completed. Well, at this point, it's probably a good idea to save what you've done so far. Um, it's good practice to get into just saving as you go. Um, like any Windows application, it can probably crash and you could lose everything. So <laughs> just make sure you save as you're going along and um, there won't be any problems. And what I normally do is save sort of incrementally as well. Um, don't save in the default data obviously, but maybe go to the desktop or, or another folder and just save, you know, use a code plug, use a name like a, a date and then a number after it. So, you know, 2008-1 um, and just do that every time you save a different one and then you, you've got a work in, in progress backlog to, to go, go from. Good practice to do. Um, all the time with any sort of file uh, making programs as well, and especially if you're using Excel as well, you'll thank me for that um, later. But um, that's that. So really now you're ready, pretty much ready to write that code plug back to the radio, and you're just going to have one channel, uh, one very simple channel, one zone, um, and you know it's very 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 straightforward way of just showing how you would configure. A simplex channel. 
repeaters, I mean, are pretty, are pretty easy. Um, you know, you're just obviously using different frequencies for different, um, for the for the to transmit and receive. But what you will have find is for the digital channels, what you will have to do is you'll have to create a different digital channel for each talk group. So you will have a few different talk groups in, in here, like the local, the um, UK wide, and you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to create a zone. What I do is create a zone for each um, a zone for each repeater. So GB7NS would have a zone, and then you'd have all the all of the NS um, talk groups under that zone, and then you can clearly, when you're in your in your radio, you can clearly just see um, scroll into your zone menu and just select what repeater you want to use. Um, so it's, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, what I'll do in a minute is load up my uh, my finished code plug and um, I'll show you that. Right, okay, so what I've done now is I've loaded up my um, code plug, it's pretty much um, the one I'm using at the moment. Um, and you'll see you know some information about um, how it all how it works. And see here, you know, um, software's firmware's sort of up to date, everything's sort of looking good there. Um, common settings, we've got some settings, my um, alias there, don't pinch that. Uh, <laughs> but basically, um, you know, things things in here. You'll see my channel list is pretty crazy. It's got every, um, not every, but uh, most of the UK repeaters in my area. All the simplex channels at the top, see, um, you know, GB7EX, NS. And this is what I was saying about um, you'll have to have a different channel with a different talk group. And each channel has to have a different talk group and a different um, time slot and a different um, colour code. So EX, for example, colour code 3, slot 2 for the local um, talk group. So, you know, it gets it gets quite complicated. You have to have, to have your head screwed on when, you, when you're making these um, code pipes from, from scratch. You need to pretty much just lock yourself in a room for a little while and um, get your head around it. Um, doing it, but really it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, so if you were to go from the beginning, what you would do is you'd you would go to your um, DMR services, your contact list here, and see what I've done here is put in. Uh, you've actually got an old call there as well, but you've got um, all the talk groups. Now you notice here I've got some personal ones in here as well. Um, I've got some personal contacts. What I've chosen to do with that. Is basically um, what I've chosen to do. With that is is only put in really the one the the, the contacts that the, the personal contacts that I'm, I'm kind of really interested in. Mainly because you only get about 900, or most of the high tier right? You only get about 900 or 1,000, just over 1,000 um, contacts in the in the radio itself. So rather than have a, a a list of every single person in the UK, which you you won't be able to do anyway, because there, there's about 1,400 at last count. Um, you know, there's ways of doing it. You could you could you know filter the the last user list and make make sure you've only got um, the most recent people in there um, to be active on the network. But to be honest, I just prefer to just to have you know the only people that um, really that I'm, I'm kind of interested in. And that actually kind of, the, what happens with that is it just means when someone calls you or calls up on a channel, you just see the number, their number on the screen, a bit like a mobile phone. So if you then want to make contact with them again, just save that number and put their call sign against it. It's, it's a far easier way of doing it than trying to import the whole UK contact list into, um, into the radio. And, it, and it's, a, it's a nightmare to maintain as well. So you're better off, in my opinion, just just doing that, um, and then you can keep your contact list down, and you know enables you to use your contact list for other things as well. Um, there's going to be linking and things like that available soon. You can change um, change what network the repeaters are connected to, things like that. So you need to make sure your contact list isn't completely full up, otherwise you won't be able to um, add any more things to, to that. Anyway, so you can see the, the receive group list. Um, 
up on here as well. So we would we, we would have a contact list here, all the group calls that you can possibly think of, um, you know, are all, all listed in there. And then for each one, we've got RX group list. You know, we have uh, local talk group nine, English talk group 13, Europe talk group two, so on right down to there. And also then I've got this one called PMR list, which has got some talk groups which I've discovered on, you know, um, PMR frequencies, and you can add those in. So you can see on here, my PMR list has, you know, a random number there. It's also got some popular ones that people use for um, for PMR. And that's how you can add different, uh, you know, different numbers of talk groups into one particular receive list. So if I type in a channel, um, you know, if I find a channel, then the chances are it will probably ring on one of those um, one of those talk groups. That's quite quite useful. And this this can just be expanded. Can't remember how many you can have in a, in this list now, but you can add quite a few in there um, to make it worthwhile. And then so we go we go back to a channel list. All the channels just end up in a great big long list, and then, of course they're organised by by zone. Um, so my zones go. UHF simplex channels, and they're all in there. Uh, you see this free channel here as well. I've talked about that in another video. That one is just really an empty channel that you can use to program on the radio itself. So, if you want to enter a frequency freestyle on your on the radio, just make a channel called free channel, and then it doesn't matter what you use it for. You can just overwrite the number of the frequency on on um, on the fly. So that's quite good. That's just an FM. Um, channel. Then you've got UHF DB simplex, so this will be simplex channels. I've got some repeaters in here, which are nearby ones to me, and that list will just expand as I'll keep adding them. Um, and then, of course, we've got your um, DMR repeaters. So DMR repeaters are all stored in here under this one, um, or GB7EX is organised into its own zone. And then you've got um, all the different talk groups and all the different channels in, in there for EX. And then the next zone is obviously GB7NS. All these are just organised exactly the same. So you know on your radio that when the channel position is in the same position per zone, you will always be on the, on the same zone, uh, the same uh, channel, but just a different, obviously a different zone. Um, so there you go. And it's also PMR 446. Yeah, PMR 446 channels are put in there. And uh, our PMR our PMR home section on there. So that's sort of it really. Um, the only thing I will go into briefly is is, um, is roaming. Now roaming is confusing a lot of people. It's really quite simple about it because what you have to do is just make a contact, uh, you know, called roaming talk group eight. So make a contact called um, talk group eight on a group call, and then create a receive group list as roam roam talk group eight. So you're just doing the same as any other talk group, uh, and then for each one of your repeaters that you've got set up that you want to add to a roaming group. So you, you create a Roam Talk Group 8 channel. Now, what you have to do on this is you have to obviously set your repeater up as, as normal um, and make sure you color code the slots all, all, all correctly. Roam in the UK is Talk Group 8 slot 2. So the whole, um, anyone that's doing the roaming will have slot 2. It's almost reserved for, for, for roaming. Um, <clears throat> and then you want to make sure you have IP site multi start multi uh, sorry IP multi site connect. You need to have that checked, uh, and then that will allow you <coughs> to activate the roaming function on the scan list. So it's important you must have that checked, otherwise you can't select um, select the roam list. Now the roam list is basically very simple to, to sort of create. Click on on the roam list. You'll have all your available channels, a bit like the other um, oh, it's group list. You'll have all the channels listed, and you just select 
the rowing group from each repeater you want to use in that rowing group. So connect all those into there <clears throat> and then go back to your each channel. So GB7, EX, Roam, Talk Group 8. Select on here your DMR London Roam group. So the DMR London Roam group is what I didn't mention that, but that's what that's what that's called. It's called DMR London um, Roam group. So then you'd add each channel to that um, Roam list as well. Make sure they're on DMR London. So if you click on the one above it, um, they're all on DMR London. <laughs> but but basically, um, yeah, they they shouldn't they shouldn't be on that. That won't matter because you haven't got them actually selected in the roam list anyway. The only channels that it will be roaming on are these ones. Um, so yeah, that's a little bug in my code bug. But but basically, um, that is how you would configure um, a roam. It's a lot of information to take in. Um, any questions you want to fire over, um, just uh, just do so, and um, I'll be I'll help as much as I can. <laughs> but but um, yeah, it's quite a, quite a lot uh, to fiddle around with. Um, make sure you don't change any crazy settings, like especially this one. Don't mess with that. Um, if you change this, you will end up with a problem where your radio won't connect to the CPS. Been there, done that, and recovered it. So um, if you find yourself in that position, just um, just give me a shout. But um, it's it's not it's not the world's most straightforward thing to do. To get out of that situation, so make sure you don't mess with this. Despite what any any system, uh, any software tells you to do, do not change that um, because it will basically sever the link between your radio and your computer CPS, particularly on portables, because I think there's only there's only one way of connecting to the portable, and that is by the USB um, connection. So there you go. That is a little insight into the um, making code plugs on a uh, on a high tier CPS. Um, it's pretty much the same for every radio, um, and the only difference I think is the PD three six five or three sixty, whatever it's called. The small little one has a slightly different CPS, but the process is the same. You just got to you just got to think um, contact list, then your receive group, then your channel. And then add that channel to a zone to get it on the radio. Thanks for watching. This is M6JKA.